Here is my latest TV antenna. For obvious reasons, I call it the quad hoop antenna. It's easy to build and it does a great job of receiving over the air TV stations. Do you want one for yourself? Well, let's hop to it. Hoop antennas do a really good job of picking up your local TV stations. I like them a lot because they are easy to build and are good looking. Also, they aren't too large and can be used either inside or outside your home, boat or RV. In an effort to increase the performance of my vertical hoop antenna, I came up with this design. The four hoops help increase the reception. You can assemble one in a couple of hours and be watching free over the air TV. Well, I know you're anxious, so let's get right to building it. You'll need a few parts. First, you start off by deciding what you will use for your element wires. You can use almost any long length of stiff wire, including copper Romex house wire, aluminum wire, wire coat hanger, or quarter inch copper tubing. For this antenna, I'm going to be using 10 gauge Romex. It's a bit pricey, but its performance is very good. It's also stiff, but it's still easy to work with. You will need a total of 120 inches of wire. You will also need the following items. A length of PVC board, one and a half inches wide. Four one quarter inch number 20 machine screws and bolts, one and a quarter inches long. Four washers for the bolts. Four one half inch long number eight lath screws. One one half inch pipe strap and a length of one half inch PVC to use as a mast. I'll start by making the elements. I'll be making four matching hoops and the wire connections for the antennas out of this. I measure and cut two lengths of cable at 22 inches each. I carefully slice off the outer sheathing and remove the inner 10 gauge wires. Each cable has three wires, so I get a total of six. Using the utility knife, I slice away the wire's insulation. The wires are not very straight, and I need them straight to form the hoops. The easiest way to straighten them is to lock one end in a vise and using a hand drill and a bit of back pressure, slowly twist the wire. It doesn't take much twisting before the wire is nice and straight. Now I take the wire ends and using a pair of needle nose pliers, I put in a terminal hook. Each hook uses about three quarters of an inch of wire to form it. Using a hammer and the anvil on my vise, I hammer the hooks to make them a bit flatter. This will create a thinner connection with better conductivity. I have to form the antenna hoops. The easiest way i found to do this is to use a gallon paint can and a rubber mallet. I start by wrapping the wire around the paint can, then I use the mallet to tap the wire, forming it into a hoop. I make the four hoops and set them off to the side. Next is the actual antenna body. I measure and cut a 16 inch piece of the PVC board. You can use wood for this, but PVC will last a lot longer and it won't absorb any moisture. I mark a center line at 8 inches. Using a pencil, I extend the line so it wraps around the back side too. I have to draw a center line down the length of the board, so I measure 3 quarters of an inch from the edge at both ends. Now I draw a 2 inch line from each end. I make a second mark on the line 1 half inches from the ends. These marks are where the hoop terminals will be. Using a quarter inch drill bit, I drill holes through the board at each of the four terminal marks. The machine screws fit easily through the holes. Now I take the two remaining lengths of 10 gauge copper, mark each at 16 inches, and trim them. These will be used as bus wires to connect the antenna elements together. 
To make the bus wires, first I bend the terminal hooks on both ends of the two wires. Then I bend the wires so they will connect the terminals, like this. Notice the left terminals of each hoop are going to connect to each other, as will the right terminals. I mark the bus leads at the center line. Using the hammer and anvil again, I flatten not only the terminal hooks, but also the middle of the wire. A matching transformer will be attached there. Using the machine screws, I temporarily screw the bus wire in place. I mark the board on the center mark just under the wires. I screw in two last screws at these points, making sure I get good contact between the screws and the bus wire. Here's what the finished bus wires should look like. Now it's time to attach the hoops. From the front side, I install a washer on each of the terminals. I hook the terminal hooks on two of the hoops like this, then snug the bolts. I try to get the hoops as even as I can. When I'm satisfied, I tighten the screws securely. I attach the half inch pipe strap on the center line with last screws. I will use a piece of one half inch PVC as my mast. Since the PVC runs a bit small, I first need to put a few wraps of electrical tape on it to make sure it is held securely. Here's the finished quad hoop antenna. I've attached a matching transformer to the center terminals. The whole build only took about an hour and a half, so it wasn't a lot of effort to even make this. Now I'll take it up to my TV test room and see how it works. As I always do with my antennas, I mount the quad hoop into a mast pole and hook it up to my test TV. I run a channel scan and after it's all completed, the TV starts receiving the over-the-air television signals. As you can see, the reception is very good, and I was able to pick up 44 channels. For me, that's very good for a non-amplified antenna. As with any antenna, placement is very important, so you may have to adjust your antenna's height and direction to get the maximum signal and reception. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to high-five the like icon, jingle the bell, and subscribe to my channel. I'm having a fun time sharing my antennas, campers, and other videos with all of you, and I can't thank you enough for tuning in. Until next time, keep watching TV!